Professor Carafit here. We're going to start on chapter twenty-seven. Animal diversity. This is a kind of a dense chapter, so um, we'll go through it uh, a little at a time. Okay, so. Everything in this picture, by the way, is an animal. There are no plants in this picture. Animal diversity is uh, uh, pretty amazing. And there's, you know, when you ask someone to think of an animal, you know, they usually pick something that's furry with big eyes and cute. But uh, sea anemones are animals. Coral are animals. Fish are animals. Insects are animals. But a lot of folks don't think of it that way. But it is true. So. Let's look at this kingdom. So, just to put things in perspective, photosynthesis kicks on in the Precambrian. Eukaryotes show up uh, kind of later in the Precambrian, followed by multicellularity. And that's when we're going to start to see the first animals uh, towards the end of the Precambrian. And then, as we cross into the Paleozoic during the Cambrian, we have what they call the Cambrian Explosion. When there were, um, by the end of the Cambrian, we had all of the living phyla of animals um, that we still have today existed by that point. As well as several phyla that are extinct now, too. So, let's first define what an animal is. What is an animal? If you had to write down a definition, what would you come up with? Well, let's look at what I got. <laughs> First of all, they are heterotrophs, and they eat via ingestion. They bring food into their bodies, unlike fungi, which uh, eat food outside their bodies and then absorb it into their cells. Okay, what else? They're multicellular. There are no single-celled animals. If it's a single-celled animal-like organism, it's some kind of protist. <clears throat> Do they have cell walls? I'll let you answer that one. They have typically active movement. So they actively move, usually with some kind of muscle twitching or something like that. They develop from embryos, kind of like plants do. They have embryonic development. They have tissues, typically, not all. We're going to look at an exception in a minute. Okay, so those are some of the things that, that we might list if we were going to uh, describe to someone what an animal is. Now, here's a cladogram of the animal kingdom. Um... Our outgroup, or the most basal animal that we're going to talk about, are the Porifera. So these names are the phyla. So kingdom, animalia, phylum, Porifera. Okay, and we're going to talk. We're not going to talk about every one of these. We're going to hit some of the highlights. We're going to talk about mostly Porifera, Cnidaria, Echinodermata, Chordata, Platyhelminthes, uh, Mollusca, Annelida, Nematoda, and Ar Arthropoda. Arthropoda, I should say. So those are the major groups that we're going to talk about. Uh, in the lecture uh, uh, over the next several days. Um, so one thing you could do uh, to help yourself learn some of these groups is to make a, kind of a, a table like this, kind of like we would use to make a cladogram, uh, and almost kind of almost like a cladogram table. But um, but here you can keep track of some of the important traits of these organisms. So you can pause the video and make your own version of this if you so choose. This is how I studied things like this in college. I made tables out of complicated chapters to help synthesize the information. Now, one thing that most animals do um, is they have a um, reproductive cycle that might be more similar to you than the plant one. Uh, adults are typically diploid, 2N. They have cells that undergo meiosis to make gametes, sperm and egg. Sperm and egg fuse together to make a zygote that grows up into a new organism and it grows by mitosis into an adult, okay? So uh, there is no alternation of generations or anything like that in the animal life cycle. So pretty straightforward there. So we're gonna start at the base of the animal cladogram. We're gonna start with the porifera, the sponges, and the cnidarians. These are the simplest animals on the cladogram. So phylum porifera. This is the oldest known fossil animal showing up around 600 million years ago, give or take. Um, it has a loose body organization, meaning, uh, it, well, it's just strange, okay? Because this animal does not have tissues. It has cell types, different cell types, but they're not aggregated into tissues. So these cells 
uh, live together and they're surrounded by, by a skeletal matrix, like a secretion that's the skeleton. And you all know this skeleton. It's what natural sponges are made out of that you might wash with in the shower or use on your car or whatever. Um, most of these groups have no body symmetry. So we don't worry about body symmetry for sponges. So you can just like say not applicable um, when you're when you're talking about body symmetry with sponges. Um, however, it's interesting, some of their larvae are kind of uh, symmetrical, like radially symmetrical. Now, this group uh, consists of filter feeders. They filter water through uh, and they pick out particles to eat. Um, their larvae are free swimming. So you can see an example of a larva over here. But as adults, they're sessile. Sessile means they're attached to the bottom. They don't move. That's what the word sessile means. So if we look at the anatomy of a sponge, you know, here's the living one and the, and the water here. Here is the body plan of one of these organisms. Um, they have pores that allow for water to filter through. Um, they have uh, this kind of skeleton, this gelatinous skeleton. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, but um, they have different cell types inside of the body. Um, one of the cell types is called a coanocyte. It's the cell that has kind of a collar on it and a flagellum that moves around and this helps to um, move water for filter feeding. And this coanocyte actually looks a lot like some kinds of protists. And we think that this group evolved from that protist group, that animals evolved from protists that took on multicellularity. So that's one of the cell types is the coanocyte. It moves water for filter feeding. Another, and, and so it brings in food by uh, uh, phagocytosis um, after they're inside the body. Um, and then amoebocytes is another type of cell that picks up that food. And amoebocytes act kind of like amoebas <laughs> in that they move around, they crawl around. And they act as kind of the circulatory system of the squid. They move from one cell to another, delivering some of this food to other parts of the body. You can see that here in number five. Um, and lastly, the other structure I want to mention is they have these extra hard, like, uh, calcium rich structures that provide support. They're kind of star shaped called spicules. And those are just supporting structures. Those are not cells. The reason I mention those is the oldest fossils that we have are of the spicules because the rest of the sponge, like the part you would wash with the skeleton doesn't fossilize all that well, but we can find the spicules in the rock layers, uh, from the late Precambrian. Now, of all the other animals we'll look at, they have some kind of body symmetry. Um, there are two major kinds of body symmetry. There's radial symmetry, which is when an organism is arranged kind of like a wagon wheel or like a bucket, kind of, you know, circular. Um, these organisms are usually sessile. They sit in one spot and they reach out for food in all directions. Um, that's radial symmetry. Um, and most animals are uh, bilaterally symmetrical, meaning they have a anterior end and a posterior end, as it were, or a head end and a tail end. So, so if we look at this, this gives us some terminology. Head end, the, the best way to refer to that and what you should write down is anterior end, uh, tail end, or posterior end. The dorsal surface is this upper surface. The ventral surface is where the vent is, you know, like the anus, things like that. That's the lower surface. And then, of course, there's right and left uh, associated with this as well. So that terminology is really handy when you're dissecting and things like that to, to make sure you're, you know, if I say go to the anterior end on the dorsal surface, you'll know I'm talking about the top side by the head, right? So uh, that's a bilateral symmetry. And um, we'll end with this phylum here, phylum Cnidaria, for this video. Phylum Cnidaria has true tissues. When they're embryos, they have two layers of cells as embryos. The outer layer is called the ectoderm, and then the middle layer is called the endoderm. Um, they're called germ layers because they're early layers found in the embryo, and those develop into body tissues as that embryo develops. This is a pretty old group as well, not quite as old as the sponges. Um, they have radial symmetry, and they have a gastrovascular cavity. So they have a mouth, and that mouth is also the anus and they secrete digestive enzymes into that cavity and digest food and then absorb it via endocytosis after the food's brought in to the mouth and digested.
This group includes um, coral, corals, jellies, like jellyfish, and sea anemones, as well as hydra, which is a native species here in Arkansas. They're very, very small and live in ponds. Here's uh, an example of the body plan here. The um, two body forms in this group, the polyp phase is the, is the kind that are sessile stuck in one place. You can see that they have the gastrovascular cavity, they have a mouth slash anus, and here's those two germ layers that have developed into two layers of body tissue. The other kind of body plan in this group is called the medusa uh, phase, which is the like a jellyfish that drifts around uh, in the water. That's called the medusa uh, uh, medusa stage of, of, the, of, of life. And some organisms uh, might develop a polyp and then into a medusa stage and vice versa. Another thing that uh, makes this group unique is that in their tentacles, they have stinging cells um, called uh, nidocytes. Um, and these cells, when they're triggered, actually shoot little harpoon-like structures to capture and subdue their prey. Uh, so nidocytes is where uh, cnidarians get their phylum name because they all have these stinging cells uh, in their tentacles. So here's some more examples of this group, uh, including fossil groups that you can find in Arkansas. A lot of people think these are dinosaur teeth or something, but they're coral. They're called horn coral. Um, lots of different uh, cool, mostly marine organisms in this group, but some freshwater groups like the hydra that I mentioned earlier. All right, so we're going to pick up here in the next video. Uh, we're going to move our way into um, some more of the invertebrate groups.